welcome, welcome, year 12 bio, new term, new module. All right, right now we're starting module seven on infectious disease. And this is a short little video just to give you an introduction to the topic and what we're going to cover across this topic as well. Let's go through a couple of important definitions. Okay, so with, um, with module seven, there are four inquiry questions that we are going to cover. All right, these inquiry questions encompass the causes of infectious disease. All right, where we're going to be looking at how diseases are transmitted from one host to another. All right, the responses of the infected hosts, be a plant or animal, how they actually respond to the infection. All right, how immunity in humans comes into play. So how the human immune system responds to exposure of pathogens in a specific and a non-specific manner, as well as the prevention, treatment, and control of diseases. Okay, all super relevant at the moment to the whole coronavirus pandemic that's happening. And so I'm going to be continuing to um, keeping you abreast of scientific development and news and so forth as part of our lessons as we go. Alrighty. So just kind of getting ourselves started. It's always great when talking about um, infectious disease and disease in general to actually make sure everybody has a really strong idea of what we're actually talking about when we say the word disease or the word health. Now, formally, most people would consider the definition of disease to be anything or any condition that adversely affects the function of any part of a living thing. Any right. And that's kind of like, it's a, you know, textbooky, everyday example. All right. Um, the flip side of that, of course, is health is about the well-being of the organism. Okay. And so that means the body function of the organism and, you know, taking note that the body function of the organism is under control of our genes. They have to, to work health together is about to, um, have to, to work health. actually control the production of proteins and control the function of our body. So it all fits back together into modules five and six and our earlier parts of the topic in year 11. And our early... Alrighty. Well, since we're going to be Alrighty. focusing on a topic on disease, we need to have a really, really good grasp of what it means when we talk about health what it means okay so let's look at expanding that definition grass and expanding that kind of a good place to start is the world health organization's definition of health which is a state of complete physical mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease Okay, so they mean the absence of infectious disease. All right, and so see here we have the acknowledgement that people have multiple types of health, be it physical, mental, and social health. Okay, got a little link there to the WHO Constitution webpage. There's some additional reading for you to go and have a look at. All right, and so we can actually start to see where starting to see people, this breakdown where we can actually break off our health into different sections and start actually organizing our response to maintaining that health. Okay. But these are not merely the only forms of health. All right. There are other forms, other forms of health that um, they're a bit more of a modern thing. All right. And when we look at these, we can actually see that this is a very safe definition. All right. And that's just simply because, you know, who is associated with the United Nations and there is politics involved when you have a organization that works across multiple countries. All right. Um, a more, bit more modern take on definitions of health is not only physical, mental and social health, but also emotional health. All right. And that's kind of sprung out more recently away from mental health. All right, simply because we can have people who they don't necessarily fit under the category of mental health disorder, but they may have 
emotional trauma that is affecting their well-being and their ability to integrate with society. Uh, another one, and this is where you see the safe definition, who is spiritual health? Okay, All right, that it is. It is actually a um, a type of wellness um, that actually has a community function. All right, um, I'm not going to go heavily into it. All right, but a new one that is a lot more prominent these days and is actually kind of interesting how a lot of people are hmm, they're experiencing anxiety and issues and emotional and mental issues associated with it but that is environmental health all right since we are experiencing climate change all right and we are very much definitely that's a fact that we're experiencing climate change all right and again amongst particularly younger generations all right, our perspective of environmental health is becoming a much more prominent part of how we define wellness. Okay. Now, when we look at health, that's relatively straightforward. We can, we've expanded our lexicon, our understanding, our words we can use to describe health. When we come back to disease, we can actually see that we have problems with our definition of disease. And if we go to that kind of standard definition of disease being any condition which adversely affects the normal functioning of any part of a living thing, all right, it has problems. Okay. Broken limbs, physical trauma. All right. They're not, they're not really a disease. They're an injury, certainly. And they're a negative health outcome that needs to be treated. Absolutely. But they're not really catching, all right, in this context where we would talk about of health, okay? And perhaps what is most glaring is the concept of pregnancy, okay? And what I mean by saying that the definition of disease as presented covers the concept of pregnancy is that pregnancy itself can actually have adverse effects on the mother and the child, while while they're carrying the child and after after birth as well all right and in general no one's going to actually consider pregnancy to be a disease all right perhaps not in every case all right but in general that's not going to be something people would actually consider to fit the definition of disease all right and of course we have normal variation across people all right that is also going to affect what is normal and what is not all right, so we can actually see here, this is where it comes down to, just trying to define disease as one thing. All right, our definition has these exceptions. And it's something we have to live with, be mindful, and make sure we go into detail and be specific when we talk about the types of disease that we are actually doing. And so in saying this, we need to introduce a couple of new definitions. All right. And those are infectious and non-infectious disease. Now, infectious diseases, these are diseases that are spread by coming into contact with a pathogen. Now, a pathogen is a infectious agent. All right, so this is something that causes disease. Now, usually it's some form of microorganism or a infectious particle, like a viral particle. Okay. All right, and these diseases, they can be spread from person to person through coughing, sneezing, the transfer of body fluids through kissing, sex, sharing needles and so forth, through open wounds, through the exposure to blood, physical contact in the case of very infectious diseases. All right, um, but th that is often simply a result of living infectious pathogen particles being on surfaces because when someone is infected and sick with that disease, they are coughing, they are sneezing, they have body fluids going everywhere. And so physical contact with a surface that has been exposed to that person can result in that infection without necessarily having direct contact with that person, as well as ingestion of contaminated food, contaminated water, and inhalation, which again, it's usually related to micro droplets in the air, okay? So 
contact with a space where someone has been coughing or sneezing within it. All right, now to contrast that, okay, so you have infectious disease caused by pathogens. The other type of disease we need to be mindful of, which we are going to cover in module eight, is non-infectious disease. Now, these are not caused by pathogens. All right, and with the exception of inherited diseases, which do fall under non-infectious diseases, they can't be passed down from person to person. Infectious diseases, in most cases, are usually caused by the absence of something that somebody requires. And if we talk about this in purely physical health terms, we're often talking about it in terms of nutritional deficiencies, but they can also be genetic diseases. And so the one way in which a non-infectious disease can be passed from person to person is down from parent to child. Okay. All right. So that's something we'll cover in more detail in module eight. Now, just to finish this off, okay, we've, we've defined infectious and non-infectious disease. Here are some examples, and I'm going to really focus on the infectious side of this slide, notably being we have food poisoning, measles, the Nile virus, warts, influenza. All right, there's some pretty common diseases, things you would, things you would mm -hmm. hopefully be familiar with and examples that we're going to call upon as we um, talk about different infectious diseases across this module. All right, and some other examples of non-infectious diseases are asthma, allergies, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and so forth. All right, so these are, you know, this is what we mean. All right, infectious diseases, they can be spread from person to person. They're usually caused by some form of microbe or a viral particle. All right, non-infectious diseases, they're either, they either have a genetic component or they're a result of an absence of some sort of nutritional need or similar. Okay, all righty, so let's just wrap up. Today, this video has been just giving a brief topic overview of module seven that we're starting, all right, and taking a look at definitions of health, definitions of disease, definitions of infectious and non-infectious disease, and just kind of wrapping up. All right, let's get on with the rest of the lesson. I'll see you a lot next time. Bye.